<laughs> Sorry guys. Um, he's actually back, so I've got him now. Um, I ended up getting the package. He was waiting out the front. It, my studio is built in the back, um, so I had to run out the front, otherwise uh, I wouldn't get to see him. So um, you can pop back in the chat and we can keep going with this conversation too about where we were, because um, I had a couple of questions from people um, that were talking about, uh, we were switching from the um, Sony lenses to the, or so, the Sony system to the Canon system. Um, I had one question talking about changing from landscape, uh, from Canon uh, using landscape cameras to the Sony system. And I was saying in there that basically you would have to have a minimum of the Sony A7 um, R2 and you know at least a 16 to 35 millimeter lens. Um, and basically, you know, you're looking at say, well, it's two six, you're looking at probably, um, well, probably four and a half thousand dollars to swap over. Um, so if, if you did want to swap over using landscape, we clearly that you could do that. Um, but it, it is a cost that you've got to think about. I mean, no, it's not a cheap probably. thing to do. So, you know, you have to really think about whether you want to swap over or not. I mostly swapped over because of the weight issue. That's the reason why I mostly swapped over. Um, but yeah, I, I basically thought it was just too heavy for me to lug those around doing weddings. So that's why I changed doing um, from the uh, Nikon system to the Sony system. So we'll see if those other guys can come back in the chat. Uh, I just didn't want to leave it like that because I ran out uh, getting the delivery. Um, here it is. I think it's some HDMI cables um, or some cables for uh, using my um, Atmos uh, connected to my A A6500. I want to connect that using um, SGI cables, I think they're called. Um, so hopefully I can get that. Um, so I've got one looking at the moment, but let's see if anyone else pops back again. A lot of people may have gone. Um, so yeah, it looks like there's not too many here watching at the moment. So we were going through this discussion about um, this article here, which was uh, looking at switching from um, Sony, uh, from Canon to Sony. And, and we were actually in the middle of saying that we thought that uh, it was a bit misleading, this article that was on DPR Review, because they were giving all of their prices at selling your gear under this um, KEH with accessories. Um, but clearly the money that you're getting back from using KEH is crazy. I think you'd absolutely have to be desperate if you wanted to sell through them when you can get reasonable value or good value if you're actually selling it privately. Um, so if I was certainly switching, I wouldn't be using KEH, I'd be using other um, things rather than that. Um, so yeah, and it went down talking about how much it would cost you to change over to the system, uh, to the Sony system from Canon. Uh, it also gave examples if you were just swapping uh, bodies and keeping the Canon glass. I said, I don't think that's a great idea because really if you want all the features, uh, you need to be using native glass. For instance, if you bought the A9, you can't shoot at 20 frames per second any longer, it goes down to 10. So there is a real penalty if you're using um, third party, excuse me, third party manufacturer's glass. Um, so that becomes an issue. So yeah, that, well that's really all I wanted to talk about. Um, any questions guys, because I know there's a couple of people watching here, so if you have any questions, um, just leave them down below and I'll um, answer them as, as best I can. Um, what else could we just say about this? I'm just going down to the bottom what their takeaway was. Now you can get this article, just to refresh you if you watched the previous video about this, this article is from DP Review. Uh, it's the article they've put together by this guy whose name is um, Dan Bregalia, I think his name is. Um, and he's the one that's come up with this article uh, I definitely wouldn't be using this um, KH though. I don't. It's a bit silly putting that in there. I think um, it's saying uh, they conclude this by saying one thing is for certain: Sony is pushing deep into the territory previously only inhabited by Canon and Nikon, and it's only a matter of time before ma uh, before making the switch to mirrorless doesn't seem so crazy, even for pro sport shooters. Um, then again, the camera is only one part of it, of the equation. A 20 frames per second burst rate with continuous AF and no blackout screen seems nice. But if you don't have the right glass for the job, that spec won't go far either. And I think that's probably what uh, most people in Canon and Nikon will be waiting for is for Sony to up the glass. Because at the moment, if you're shooting sports, uh, you need that 600, 400 range with fast lenses 2.8, not 5.6. 
uh, it's saying you've just released that lens, but it's 5.6, so it's not really good enough. Uh, but I did mention in the other video that with ISO now, uh, you can get away with a lot by just cranking your ISO up a little bit. Um, so yeah, so any questions, throw them in guys. Uh, apart from that, um, if we haven't got much more to say, I'll log off. I just didn't want to leave it like I did uh, without saying goodbye um, before that, uh, like I said, that delivery guy came. I had to run out. I've, it's a long way to the front door. Um, yeah, so if you haven't got any questions, uh, we might end it there. So I'll talk again soon. I'll put another couple of videos up soon so you can see uh, me shooting again. Um, I'm doing a lot of shooting over the weekend as well. I'm going out to uh, near a lake doing some shoots out there. So that's going to be really good with a whole group of models. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing that. And then on the 7th, I've got that massive shoot here, which uh, is with um, seven girls and four makeup artists where we're doing glitter. Uh, I'll be streaming some of that live so you can see it. And obviously, I will be putting the uh, shoot up later on in YouTube as well, but I will stream some parts of it live on the day so you can ask some questions. Uh, yeah, no worries, Ali. Yeah, sorry, mate, I had to run off. Um, so yeah, I'm, I just thought I'd uh, have a chat with um, that. So did you have any questions, Ali, that you, you sort of wanted to come up with? Or you're, are you a Canon? I couldn't remember what you said before. Um, like I said, the, ma the massive, the major part of the market now is Canon. I think Nikon are, are starting to really struggle. That's one thing that I saw with what I had, like I said, I had so much Nikon gear and I was a little bit worried about if Nikon start to crash, um, how much value I was going to get back from my Nikon gear. So I really thought um, that I'm going to get out while I get good money for it. And like I said, I didn't lose much at all. So that, that was one real benefit. So if you are a Canon shooter and you're thinking about doing it, you may have to keep an eye on the market and, and possibly if you were going to do it, do it not too late because you will lose money if everyone starts to switch. So it's a thing to consider. Um, yeah, so Ali's Canon. Um, yeah, so I mean, I always used to come against Canon even when I was with my Nikon gear. Most of the Canon, uh, shooters in the weddings were, were using Canon. Uh, I was a bit of a rarity. It's even rarer now because I'm using all Sony gear. Uh, I get some funny looks from the videographers who are using um, GH5s and, and GH4s and then they look over at me and they see that I'm shooting Sony and they usually do comment, oh wow, you're using Sony. It's, it's quite a novelty that um, they're really quite taken back when they see what I'm using. So it's, it's quite, actually quite funny. Um, so yeah, so have a read of that article because it is, it's interesting, but I think it's written a little bit weird in a way that they're saying about the, the price. There's no way if you were selling your, your Canon gear, you'd be using that um, trade in value from KEH. Um, yeah, so apart from that, um, well, we might uh, head off. Any more questions, guys, before we go? Um, I'll probably delete these anyway because I don't want it chopped off like it was, so I'll probably take the feed off. Um, I'm more just learning how to do this live streaming, so I seem to, I think I've got it down pat now. Um, there's a bit involved with doing it live when you want to leave a um, schedule, but I think I've got that um, down pat. Um, so just remember, I'm not just here for Sony. Don't, don't ever take it that way. Like I said, I came from Nikon, and I would switch again in a heartbeat if something better for me came along. Uh, the only reason why I'm using it the Sony at the moment is because of the fusion that I do, which is video and stills at the same time, the light weight of these cameras. Um, so that's the main reason why I'm doing that at this stage. But, but like I say, if you're a photographer, you're a photographer. It doesn't matter what type of gear you use. I'm just giving my examples from using Sony and my Switch. Um, but I've certainly got nothing against Nikon. I've certainly got nothing against Canon, Fuji, Panasonic. Uh, I think they're all amazing systems. It's just at this stage, at this moment, the, the Sony gear is, is right for me. Um, so I hope you understand that as you follow along and, and you know, join in my conversations uh, as this uh, keeps going on. I do use Profoto an awful lot as well. Um, so I'm very strong in off-camera flash. Uh, and I also have a hell of a lot of um, continuous lighting gear that I probably will sort of talk about the benefits between using continuous and flash and stuff like that as well over the, you know, the coming weeks. Um, so that's about it. Well, all right guys, so we'll leave that for now and we'll have another chat again soon. Um, obviously I'll find some other articles that we can have a talk about. I probably am gonna stream more on the um, Monday or Tuesday uh, and I sort of try and fit a time where most people can watch. It's, it's awkward because uh, if I do it too early here, then obviously all the Aussie people that are following me can't watch. And then if I do it 
too late, then clearly it's, it's no good in, in England and it's no good in the US. So I sort of try and strike a medium, which tends to be around about seven o'clock US time and, and stuff like that. But, you know, we'll uh, have to see how we go. Hi, Jim. How are you, mate? Nice. Thanks for saying hi. Um, so yeah, so fi- please uh, check out those shoots that I'll be doing uh, on the 7th. At least I will have a lot up before then because I'll clearly be putting up what I'm shooting this weekend as well. I'll be showing that. Um, I'm not quite certain. It's going to be a fashion type shoot uh, with some younger girls and some older girls um, down by a lake, which is a beautiful location. Um, so I'll be showing, I'll be sharing that. I may do a little bit live, but most of it might just come in YouTube um, as videos that you can watch. And like I said, I have that really big shoot on the 7th that I will stream some parts of that live for you as well. So I can show you how I'm setting that up. Uh, I can't wait to do that shoot. It's going to be so much fun. Um, Yeah, so apart from that, uh, I'm just going to say goodbye. So um, I'll see you again in the next uh, videos, guys. So it's been a pleasure talking to you. And um, any questions, leave them down below. Although I think, like I said, I might delete this. I'll have to see. And uh, I'll catch you later. Bye for now.